starts right now. An early morning shooting outside a short term rental on the north side has killed a man in his 20s and prompted what may have been an accidental standoff. Garrett Berger is live near the scene in the 4600 block of Hawthorne Woods. Garrett, what are you seeing out there? This has been a long situation. It absolutely has. It's been nine hours since the shooting happened and you can still see the police tape and officers behind me. They have now taken away the victim, though police are still out. It appears that they're lingering more along the edges of the scene. We're not sure for how much longer they're going to be out here. But earlier today, we did talk with a woman who says she tried to save the life of the victim. Now, she said that this had been a birthday celebration for someone else who had died and also a video shoot. They'd rented out this house on the on the corner of the block, and it sounded like most of the people were generally from in town. The victim, she told us, is a San Antonio native in his mid 20s who is now in the Navy. He was back visiting and was going to get food when he was shot outside of the home. The woman said she tried to stop the bleeding and give her friend CPR until police arrived, but he died on scene. She thinks the shooting was a combination of retaliation and mistaken identity. A San Antonio police spokesman didn't know the possible motive, but here's how he laid out what happened. We believe that a male came out of the house. Um, I don't know to meet somebody or what, but that's when a vehicle unknown at this time with the unknown amount of suspects shot that male with uh, what they believe to be a rifle. Um, that male was deceased right there. Now that suspect car took off and that's when the party from the Airbnb where the male came from, our victim, they found their friend. Police think there may have been at least 20 people at that party, but some took off after the shooting. Others ran back into the house and didn't come out even when police were telling them to. The police spokesman and the woman we talked to suggested they may have been scared. Everybody eventually left the house peacefully after about two hours. Police said they found weapons in and outside of the home. Now, neighbors here say that this short term rental down there on the corner is known as a bit of a loud and party house. We're checking with the city to see if there have been any complaints in, in the recent past. Live in the north side, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you so much, Garrett. Taking a look outside with live cam, we are looking at Loop 410 at East Houston. There is a huge backup right now and a crash. We don't know all the details of what's going on there. We know there's another major crash on the southeast side of town, but definitely stop. So if you can, avoid that area. Yeah, Courtney, and that's uh, they're completely getting traffic off the main, main lanes there. That's uh, southbound 410, and where we think that crash is is around Rigsby. That's what TxDOT is reporting, uh, but 410 is completely shut down there on the east and southeast side, too. As Courtney said, you'll want to avoid the area. Let's show you the map real quick, and uh, you can see it there on the east side. Uh, the, the closure is, again, right at Rigsby and the Highway 87 there. So they're going to have you move over to the service road to get around all this, but it's a long stretch. And so basically traffic is backed all the way up to Interstate 10. Big mess there on the east side. We'll continue to keep you updated on uh, what is going on there. Meantime, we're also watching the Saharan dust. It is starting to shift in. We've seen uh, the hazy sky is certainly around Houston and starting to see some here, too. If you look outside on live cam, you can almost see the haze out there. This dust will be shifting in during the afternoon and air quality uh, continues to go down a little bit. So this orange color represents air quality that is unhealthy for those who are sensitive. We're talking folks with asthma or severe allergies uh, that, that may get bothered by this. And this kind of air quality is starting to work its way into San Antonio. So this is definitely something we want to uh, keep tabs on it. We will throughout the afternoon. Otherwise, it's hot. 97 our high heat index will be 100 plus into the afternoon. We've also got some activity going on in the tropics. We'll show you what's going on there coming up in just a couple minutes. Courtney. Lots to cover. Thanks, Justin. Well, the floating barriers at our southern border can stay in place for now, that's word from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals last night. It was around this time last year that Governor Greg Abbott installed those floating barriers in the Rio Grande as part of Operation Lone Star to deter illegal border crossings. Ever since, they've been a controversial topic as well as the focal point of several legal battles. You can read more about last night's ruling and what could come next on KSAT.com.
KSAT's doing something different this election season. We're going to communities all over South Texas and hearing from voters on both sides about what issues matter most to them. If you need a reason to feel hopeful about political discourse, you'll want to tune in. Our first episode was awesome, focused on voters in Uvalde. Scan this QR code right now on your screen to watch and stay on the lookout for our next edition of Your Voice South Texas. Well, in the summer, hunger stays around, but volunteer numbers drop. The San Antonio Food Bank says during August, they often see fewer volunteers and they're calling for extra support right now. Our Tiffany Huertas takes a look at why this drop happens and what priorities the food bank is focusing on as fall approaches. The San Antonio Food Bank offers a chance to give back year round. It's the best thing ever. It doesn't matter how sticky your hands get, like, it's just so much fun. For middle school student Gianna Trevino, she reflects on her deep personal connection to the cause. I knew my family needed stuff like this, you know, so I guess it makes me very, like, joyful. Trevino is one of the students volunteering this Wednesday. Eric Cooper, president and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, says they're in need of extra hands this August. As summer wraps up and kids go back to school, families are focused on lots of things and definitely they're not focused on volunteering. And we feel a dip here at the San Antonio Food Bank. It's tough to get stuff done because of few volunteers. Volunteer opportunities are diverse. I've got volunteers behind us. They are packing produce bags that will go to nourish families. Here in our warehouse, they're always working with food, but our kitchens, they're prepping the meals. As summer comes to a close, the food bank is turning its attention to fall initiatives. It is a time when lots of food drives get started. And so look, if you can host a food drive, order one of our red barrels, fill it with food, it will go a long way in feeding families. September is also Hunger Action Month. Where San Antonio goes orange, we've got our Harvest of Hope and then our Turkey Trot 5K. So look, there is so many different ways that people can get involved with their San Antonio Food Bank. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And Cooper says this fall, the Food Bank's Hunters for the Hungry program invites local hunters and processors to donate specific animals. The program focuses on lean protein, which is essential in the fight against hunger. To learn more about how you can help, just visit KSAT.com. Coming up, couples hoping to realize their dreams of becoming parents have had those hopes dashed. And not only that, they're now out thousands of dollars. Details on a scam warning from the FBI. Plus, several products under recalls right now. That includes some grocery store staples. Our Ivan Herrera has the details after the break. Welcome back. A reminder for you, tomorrow we're hosting a special edition of Doc Talk. This week, we want your questions on back to school health. Scan the QR code on your screen, submit your questions that you have about your child's health before they head back to the classroom, and we will take those questions straight to a local pediatrician. KSAT 12's Doc Talk airs every Thursday at 6.30. Steam cleaners, dumbbell sets, and deli products all under recalls because they could be dangerous. KSAT digital journalist Ivan Herrera tells us what you should look out for in this latest recall roundup. If you bought a Bissell Steam Shot recently, you may want to check the label to see if your cleaner has been recalled. Bissell has recalled 3.2 million Steam Shot cleaners because they can expel hot water or steam onto people while using the product or during the heating process. The recall involves model numbers 39 and 7 and 2994. The company is offering a $60 credit on its website or a $40 refund for each recalled Steam Shot that you own. You can Contact Bissell for your refund. If you're working out with this Proform Rapid Strike 50 pound adjustable dumbbell set, you're instructed to stop using it immediately. The dumbbells adjust from 5 pounds to 50 pounds using a manual selection pin while the weights are nested in the base. The dumbbell set was recalled after eight reports of weight plates dislodging during use, three of which resulted in injuries. The recall involves model number PAMSDB20. The sets were sold on the Proform website, Amazon, Dix. Sporting Good, Lowe's, and Walmart sites as well. Contact iFit to receive a free repair in the form of a replacement for the molded tray.
The popular deli meat company Boar's Head is recalling an additional 7 million pounds of ready-to-eat meat products. They were made at a Virginia plant where an investigation into a deadly outbreak of listeria food poisoning continues. The new recall includes 71 products made between May 10th and July 29th under the Boar's Head and Old Country brand names. Listeria typically causes fever, muscle aches, and tiredness. Infections are especially dangerous for people over 65, those with weakened immune systems, and during pregnancy. Pregnant women, uh, their immune systems are relatively weakened, um, and they have a risk of uh, transmitting the infection to their unborn baby. Nearly all of those who have gotten sick have had to go to the hospital. So far, according to the CDC, no one in Texas has gotten sick. Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. And you can find all of this information on KSAT.com. Right here is our KSAT article on this subject. You can check out the full list. We have this list right here of the boar's head products that are affected. We also have links where you can learn all about these recalls. We always air them. So definitely go ahead and check this out. Let's head to Justin right now, live outside with live cam. Not a cloud in the sky. No clouds, but a little bit of haze there. According yeah, to you can see it. You can almost see it. It's probably going to get a little bit worse before it gets better as we look live out over the airport. The aquifer after peaking yesterday is now starting to fall. It's down half a foot to 636.8. So we built up a little bit of a surplus with the rainfall and now it is starting to go away, unfortunately. In your pollen count, molds are moderate. Fall elm, pigweed, and grass are all there. We'll take another look at the dust. We'll talk tropics too. All of that coming up after the break. All right, welcome back. It is time to see what Jen and Fiona are up to over at SA Live. What do you have for us? We're a little dressed hey down today because it is our home improvement show Ooh. today. So that got us thinking about all those oh, DIY projects you may mm. have at home or just a general to-do list. Uh, so we want to know. It's a long list in my head. Mm. Uh, what about you guys? Do you have a project that you're hoping to get oh. to soon? I just need to replace some light bulbs. Like, I'm way behind. <laughs> uh, I know it's I have the a long simplest list. things sometimes, right, that are not going to take long that Tend to get you yeah, know right, pushed do. down the yes, list. Just say right? you're gonna do it tomorrow, and then you never do it. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean our house is a lot older, so since we've had it for years, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna repaint these walls. <laughs> Yep. Painting is a lot, and I, it's not like I think it's going to be quick. I know it's a mission, so it's and true. I like to do things myself, so I just got to pull. I got to do it. It feels better, right, when you do it yourself? It does, but, but again, so. it goes down that list, so yeah. that's our question today. Share that project that you're hoping to get to. Maybe it's a dream project. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just changing out the light bulbs. And, and if you have pictures, <laughs> be sure to send those, too. Mm -hmm. So yes. let us know what's on your home improvement to-do list, and you may see it on the show when we continue here live from Historic Market Square. See you guys in a bit. All right, thank you. Now I feel the pressure. Right? We've publicly said that we need to do things. Now <laughs> well, we have to do it. I always love these home improvement shows when they take a sledgehammer to the wall. I do want to do that. Oh, you know, yeah. I, you know, break down a wall. Yeah, but, that's uh, not what I need. Only if the wife says it's okay. <laughs> She'll say so, no. She'll say no. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are tracking that Saharan dust, Courtney. Yes, That's going to be the big story struggle. today. I know we said it's minor allergies and Correct. stuff, but we I can feel it. Some people do. Yeah. Some people do. And that's why we want to make sure you're aware of the situation. And I was looking at some pictures coming out of Houston, and the skies were super hazy there. And I'm starting to notice on our, our live cams that uh, we're getting a little more hazy here in San Antonio. Look, we see these plumes every year. This is nothing new. Uh, but this one's a little more dense than normal, and it's going to be working across Texas. So... I'd say the leading edge of, it, uh, edge of it is starting to work through San Antonio, Austin, and it will build across Texas later today. Now, the air quality today and tomorrow will probably move into that unhealthy for some category, meaning if you have asthma or you have severe allergies, this could bug you. And so it's going to be today and tomorrow. And I think by Friday, this starts to let up and things will get better. As you go outside, yeah, you can kind of see it there. It's uh, certainly more hazy than we're used to. Those guys are not the blue color that we've seen in previous days. 88 degrees at the airport, 90 in New Braunfels, 90 in Converse, 82 Bernie, 85 in Kerrville. So things are warming up, and we've got a pretty stout south-southeasterly wind right now uh, going at about 14 miles per, per hour. We'll see some gusts a little bit higher than that. Satellite picture, we had clouds for a few hours, and they quickly dissipated. We are cloud-free 
other than if you go out to say Del Rio or Eagle Pass, you're still trying to lose some of those morning clouds, but the, even those are quickly eroding. So it's going to be a mostly sunny day as we get into the afternoon again, other than that haze. The current heat index already feels like 96 here in San Antonio, already feels like 97 in Converse, 99 in Pleasanton. It's a hot, sticky, humid day and heat index values likely top 100. Uh, probably here pretty soon within the next couple of hours, you'll start to see these numbers go over the 100 degree mark. And certainly by this afternoon, uh, could go as high as 103, 104 here in San Antonio. That's what we saw yesterday. So as you plan out your day here, 4 o'clock, 97 hazy, feels like 103, 95 at 6 o'clock, it'll feel like 101. It'll take until probably 9 o'clock for those temperatures to get below uh, 90, and then uh, we'll be in the 80s. Uh, going into the evening hours uh, with just a few clouds here and there. I want to show you what's going on in the tropics. Things are really starting to heat up out in the Pacific. We did get tropical depression number three. That formed today, starting to look a little more healthy. You've got a system out in the open Pacific that likely develops, and another one that's likely going to become Daniel. Uh, these will all move west out into the open Pacific, so no threat to land with these, but it just goes to show you that the tropics here in the Pacific are heating up, and it's also heating up in the Atlantic. We've got a wave here, which we've kind of been waiting on to gain some thunderstorm activity and gain a little bit of organization. And it's finally starting to do that near Puerto Rico. And as this gets pulled north, uh, we've got our high pressure out here. So the flow would probably take this north towards the Bahamas. There's a 60% chance of development once it gets there. I would say folks in Florida, East Coast, want to keep a close eye on this. And even here in Texas, just in case I uh, were to move a little bit further south, which I don't think is a real possibility, but uh, we still want to watch it over the next couple days. And very quickly, our future cast shows that high pressure wobbles over top of us. That keeps us warm and hot and dry until we get late into the weekend. We get a little disturbance that rotates around this high, and I think that could give us a few showers and storms as we head into Sunday. So we've put in some small rain chances for Sunday, late Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. 97 Thursday, 98 Friday, 99 Saturday. And again, some small rain chances Sunday into Monday, but nothing to write home about. These are small. This is a pretty typical summer pattern. Are you seeing worse dust in Houston or it's just kind of hitting them first? I think it's hitting them first. Okay. The coast has kind of seen it, uh, seen the worst of it so far, but okay. it is moving inland. So it'll probably dissipate there first. Correct. Okay. Yep. Good to know. Thank you so much, Justin. Mm -hmm. Okay, couples around the country that wanted to grow their families are now dealing with legal issues. How they say they were scammed out of several thousand dollars when we come back. Now to some hopeful couples around the country who have dreams of expanding their families, some through surrogacy. In an investigation in partnership with ABC-owned stations, we take a look at how some people turn to one Houston woman to help them grow their family. And now ABC's Ariel Reshef reports there are allegations she took millions of dollars for herself. This morning, the FBI investigating after dozens of families say the money they put in an escrow account to pay for surrogacy was allegedly stolen by the woman in charge of the company. It's just not fair. Sarah and Corey Swallow are well acquainted with the surrogacy process. Sarah was born without a uterus. The couple welcomed their daughter Rosie through a gestational carrier nearly two years ago. The Swallows had just one more viable embryo and were getting ready for the next embryo transfer when they found out nearly $55,000 they put in escrow with a Houston-based company called Seam was seemingly missing. Now you're finding out that your money could potentially be in jeopardy. What was that like for the two of you? Yeah, I mean, your stomach just sort of drops out the bottom. And the Swallows aren't alone. Jenna and Roy Copeland always dreamed of having a baby, but after 10 years of miscarriages, an ectopic pregnancy, and failed IVF treatments, they turned to surrogacy. Beyond the financials, um, the journey itself is really taxing. With their gestational carrier five months pregnant, they were happily making plans for the future when they discovered the $40,000 they'd also put with Seam seemed to have vanished. Little did we know that the following week was going to be filled with reaching out to law enforcement, to attorneys, filing all these multiple claims um, instead of being excited. A new lawsuit on behalf of at least 30 couples who had their money with Seam, accusing the company's owner, Dominique Side, of defrauding hundreds of hopeful families out of millions of dollars. 
To date, our investigation has been able to point to about $10.9 million that have been removed from the escrow accounts. According to the lawsuit, Side allegedly transferred escrow funds to several side ventures, including a vegan clothesline, real estate investments, luxury vehicles, expensive trips, and a recording studio, with more than $2.2 million from her clients allegedly used to bankroll her own music career as a rap and R&B artist under the name Dom. A lot of these escrow funds were intended to pay for the surrogates' medical care and prenatal care. Surrogates like Jessica Warrett, who is carrying twins for Shannon and Chase Willardson of Idaho, who had their funds with seen. I remember thinking so many times, like, this cannot be, this can't be real. Dominique's side has yet to respond to the lawsuit. The company now sending an automated email response and voice recording. My company and I have been noticed that we are subject to an active investigation by federal authorities. But our Houston station, KTRK, caught up with her mother in New Orleans. I know she wouldn't intentionally do anything to hurt anybody. ABC News partnering with our ABC-owned stations around the country, who spoke to several more families who allegedly lost money with SEAM. Now scrambling to figure out how to pay their surrogates, some pulling from retirement accounts and using the last of their savings. What gives you the strength and the hope to continue going? I know you have only one embryo left. I think that, that we have one chance left at this. That was ABC's Ariel Resha reporting. Dominique Side has not responded to any ABC News request for comment. The FBI tells ABC News that it continues to encourage anyone who may have been a victim to come forward. A spike in COVID-19 cases. Why doctors say tracking that spike is tricky. All right, taking a look outside with live cam. We are looking at that crash that we told you about earlier in the show. This says Loop 410 at East Houston. This is on the southeast side. Traffic still backed up. We just heard from the, the San Antonio Fire Department confirmed this is a fatal crash. So there is someone involved that has died. We don't know the details surrounding that, but we know it could potentially have been a pedestrian. And we are going to stay on this. Of course, a terrible situation, but also backing up traffic. So please try to avoid that area. We know in these fatalities, it does take hours to make sure that people People are on the scene um, taking care of that investigation. So it, it may be a long time, Justin. Yeah, and you can see all the cars are being forced to exit there to the yeah. service road and 410 southbound. Uh, it's, it's actually closed at Rigsby, Rigsby. but it's mm -hmm. backed, uh, well, backed all the way to Houston, and that's, uh, that's what we're seeing there. We can pop up the map real quick, uh, give you a little better idea of uh, where this is. Again, on the east and southeast side there, so just south of Interstate 10, is uh, where that backup sort of begins because that's where people are being forced to exit and uh, it extends all the way down to 87 or Rigsby. So there, there's a long stretch here and you just, you're gonna wanna avoid it if you can uh, because there will be some major delays uh, probably here within at least the next hour or so. Meantime, we've been tracking the Saharan dust and the air quality has really started to kind of fall off a little bit here. This orange color represents unhealthy for those who are sensitive. We talked about it last half hour. It's been mainly on the coast this morning, but now it's starting to spread inland. Uh, so for those with uh, allergies to, to this kind of dust or perhaps asthma, this, uh, this could be a problem for you. Uh, and the skies continue to get a little more hazy. We'll talk more about that here in just a couple of minutes. 97 degrees today. Uh, heat index will be 100 plus with a nice little breeze out of the south southeast. Courtney. All right, thank you, Justin. Well, it is the last day of July already, so back to school for parents is top of mind. And that, of course, as parents know, means germs are going to spread around again. As your kids head back to class, the night team's Avery Everett showed us how San Antonio is seeing a spike in COVID-19 this summer. No one wants to spend the summer sneezing or coughing, but it's a reality that doctors are warning of, and that's because of rising COVID-19 cases across San Antonio. Are we seeing an influx this summer? We are seeing an increase in COVID cases this summer. Across the third week of July, University Health reported 336 positive tests for COVID-19. Now that number jumped more than 100 cases from the previous week in July. Doctors say one concern is 
that mandatory reporting anymore is pretty slim. It's been a bit challenging because we don't see as much data, as much information. There's some issues with national and uh, statewide reporting. Summer surges are expected with people traveling across the country, but doctors say stopping the spread can be pretty simple. Stay home if you're sick. Wash your hands. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. All right, doctors say this is the first major spike since the CDC changed its isolation guidelines. To see that updated recommendation, just head to ksat.com. We're tracking it for you. Two years after being accused of speeding and crashing into the back of a vehicle and killing a woman, Alexandra Castro, Castro is set to stand trial for manslaughter today. Castro was already in court yesterday. That was for jury selection. The prosecution claims in July of 2022, Castro was driving 91 miles per hour in a construction zone on Highway 281 near TPC Parkway when he hit the back of another vehicle that was stopped. An arrest warrant states Castro didn't even hit his brakes before the crash. The driver of that other vehicle was 24-year-old Alexandra Shea West Siebert, who died. Investigators say that Siebert was stopped after being caught up in a traffic backup on 281 that had been caused by a wrong way crash when she was hit. Another story we're following. Last night, a 40-year-old woman was taken to a local hospital after she was found with stab wounds near South Medina Street. Police say she is in stable condition. That being said, they still not have found the crime scene where that happened, and they still don't have a description of the suspect. So if you know anything about this, you're asked to call SAPD immediately. Well, pay and benefits for America's workers has slowed down since April. Compensation rose 0.9% from April to June. This trend could keep price pressures in check and encourage the inflation fight fighters at the Federal Reserve. Higher wages and benefits are good for employees, but slower pay growth will tell federal officials that inflation is falling back to their 2% target. You can read more about this one on KSAT.com as well. Interestingly enough, the Federal Reserve is expected to hold interest rates steady at their two-day meeting that wraps up today. Fed officials said that they will begin to lower interest rates starting in September, which is a big deal. We've been tracking that. After today's meeting, economists will be listening closely to Chair Jerome Powell's news conference for hints about future rate cuts and how much that might be. Federal officials raised interest rates to their highest level in more than two decades. It was done to slow part of the economy and get inflation back down to the central bank's 2% target after it soared to a 40-year high in 2022. Inflation still remains above the target, but it has been cooling down. Well, Vice President Kamala Harris told a packed Atlanta arena of more than 10,000 supporters that the momentum in this race is shifting in her direction. Harris responded to President Trump's backtracking about a planned September ABC debate with a direct demand, quote, if you've got something to say, say it to my face, end quote. The loud arena cheered her name while she targeted her rival and his running mate, J.D. Vance. Harris also hit Trump's immigration plan, saying he, quote, tanked the bipartisan deal because he thought it would win him an election. During a rally in Nevada, Vance has promised mass deportations during a Trump presidency. The Trump campaign also came out with a new ad hitting Harris on that same immigration issue. And right now, we want to show you a live look at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention. Former President Donald Trump speaking at an event moderated by ABC News correspondent Rachel Scott, Fox News host Harris Faulkner, and Semaphore politics reporter Katia Goba. You can see that this event's still just being set up. Some chairs, everyone's starting to sit down, and that stage right now empty will soon have start the event. It's supposed to start around 1230, so we're watching that closely. We face from, this faced some backlash for inviting Trump. Some of its most prominent members publicly expressed that disapproval. Meantime, Vice President Kamala Harris has offered to address the National Association of Black Journalist, vir journalist virtually after their convention in Chicago this week. That's according to the organization's president. The organization says the vice president's schedule didn't allow her to attend in person. You can watch this live stream on ksat.com and ksat+. Plus. A woman says she is the victim of inappropriate touching, and the man she's accusing is an elected leader who's been accused of this before, where she says this happened next on the News at Noon.
A once ousted elect elected official accused of sexual harassment but never criminally charged, now back in the spotlight, accused of a similar incident, this time at a church. We're talking about Leon Valley City Councilman Benny Martinez. A new woman says Martinez rubbed against her inappropriately while they were at church. And we want to warn you, some of the details you're about to hear are graphic. As a woman, you, you have the right to, most in the church, to be safe. And I don't feel safe there. Eva Cervantes says on July 30th, 2023, she was a volunteer camera operator for her church's telecast. Another volunteer was sent to help check a problem with her equipment. Benny Martinez, who is in charge sometimes to check the cameras, he will go and will go to the place where I was standing up. It was during that interaction that Cervantes says Benny Martinez stood behind her in a tight space and rubbed his crotch on her. I start focusing on the camera and I just feel somebody behind me and I, I could feel his penis, his private parts, obviously with the pants on and I feel it, but I cannot move. She was frozen in panic and shock. I, the camera was on red, that means I'm alive. I cannot move and I was just there feeling him behind me. Cervantes and her husband took their complaint to church leaders. She was told to stay quiet about the incident until they completed an internal investigation. They asked us to be very uh, private in, in this conversation and this issue to don't share with nobody else. In a statement to KSAT, the church said that out of respect for everyone involved, they promised to keep their conversation with her confidential while they reviewed the complaint. Martinez is a Leon Valley City councilman. His city bio outlines his work as a broadcast engineer for his church ministry. Cervantes provided Kay said with this August 2023 email in which leaders of the church said they had initiated steps to keep Martinez away from her, including requiring him to give all people appropriate personal space while at the church. And signs were also placed requiring only one person to be behind the cameras. In February 2024, she filed this complaint with San Antonio police describing the assault you felt sexually harassed that day i felt i felt very violated i felt very uncomfortable i didn't want to create waves and problems it sounded eerily similar to what Catherine rodriguez described in 2018 the councilwoman was one of six people who filed formal complaints against martinez she accused him of sexual harassment other complaints allege he created a hostile work environment and other charter violations. And I would tell any woman not to be afraid. Um, if it's somebody that, that locally that had this, I will stand by you 100%. It's horrible to feel alone. Rodriguez lost her seat and says she was called demeaning names. I just knew I couldn't stay quiet because it was going to happen. Thing. It was going to happen to somebody else. Martinez denied the sexual harassment claim. In 2019, Leon Valley City Council voted two to one to remove Martinez from office following a lengthy hearing for charter violations. That hearing only examined the alleged charter violations. It did not address the sexual misconduct allegation made by Rodriguez. Martinez later ran for office and was reelected. She is going on the record. This is a councilwoman in Leon Valley, Catherine Mar Rodriguez. She is accusing her fellow council member, Benny Martinez, of sexual harassment. She's telling her story on camera for the very first time. Cervantes says Rodriguez's story encouraged her to tell hers. Then I was like, and then I'm not crazy. It, 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 this happened to me. And people tried to, to say, no, 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 it was not that. Because it gets in a point like a, they start trying to doubt yourself. You yourself. Yes. Recently, Cervantes was removed from her volunteer job of seven years. Comments made by church members make her feel like it was retaliation. This is because of you because what you say about Benny, because of the situation, you brought all this to yourself. In a statement, the church declined to address her claim. It would not be appropriate for us to make further comments about her church members. We reached out to Martinez by email a couple of times and caught him over the phone. Do you know for a fact that the stuff that Catherine accused me of, it was all lies that was proven in the hearing? 
And this Eva stuff is all lies that happened a year ago and nothing happened. The Leon Valley Council did not prove or disprove the claim made by Rodriguez, saying the then councilwoman waited too long to file her complaint. He has always denied any wrongdoing, but declined to sit down with Kset for an interview. I'm not going to go there. I'm, I, I will not talk to you. We reached out to San Antonio police for an update on Cervantes' complaint, and they said, This case is still open and under investigation. The case is currently being investigated as an assault contact, as that is the most appropriate offense based on the description given by the victim. It's important to remind our viewers that Martinez has not been criminally charged in any of these allegations. Patty Santos, KSET 12 News. Now, in their comment, the church said they addressed the issue when they became aware of it and have not been contacted by local authorities, but will cooperate if they are. Now, right now, KSAT has decided not to name that church since no legal action has been taken against it in connection to Cervantes' claims. Now, in this subject matter, we always want to remind you anyone who has experienced assault and needs someone to talk to can call the Rape Crisis Center, which has a 24-7 sexual assault hotline. That's 210-349-7273. If you're going through something and need free services, their motto is help, hope, and healing. Welcome back. We're starting to close in on 90 degrees today. And by the way, it's the last day of July. We're heading into August tomorrow. I want to give you some August climatology. We start the month in 97. And by the way, August is our hottest month, climatologically speaking, at least first half of the month. Uh, the average low is 75. Here's the good news. By the end of the month, temperatures, the average temperature at least actually starts to drop. Why is that? Because it's possible by the end of the month, we can start getting some weak fronts. It doesn't always happen, but there's enough there to drag the average down just a little bit. The average low is 73 and we average about 2.15 inches of rain. Let's hope we get some more rain in the forecast. It's not looking good in the short term. Uh, this is the temperature outlook August 6th through 10th. So basically uh, we're not we're expecting above average temperatures over the next week, but probably even going into next week as well. And it's not just us uh, where you see these orange and red colors. That's where the likelihood of above average temperatures is fairly high and it's across a large portion of the country that we're going to see some elevated temperatures as we head into August. Uh, ridge pipe pressure, one of the big reasons. Today, it's going to be around 100 in Dallas, 103 in Abilene, 102 in El Paso. So very hot there, 103 in Wichita, 97 in St. Louis. Not only that, it's really humid uh, across the uh, Midwest and the North Texas and parts of Kansas and Missouri. So they've got excessive heat warnings there. Kansas City down to Springfield and Wichita, Memphis, Little Rock, all places that will see heat indices well above 100 today. We don't have any heat advisories here, but it is still going to be very hot. And that ridge pipe pressure is directing everything up and around. So we hardly have any clouds and uh, those disturbances, they rotate around that high, producing some thunderstorms uh, in places like St. Louis, or at least just to the north and east of that. And that's where there could be some more severe weather today. Of course, we're focused on the dust and it has now made its way into Texas and it will continue to spread across the state as we get into tomorrow. I do think we'll start to see things lighten up a little bit as we get into tomorrow afternoon and certainly as we get into Friday lower concentrations. So today should be our haziest day and we are seeing that outside. That's downtown right there. Usually we can see it pretty well, but not today that haze is there and the skies just aren't that brilliant blue like we're used to. 88 right now, 90 in New Braunfels, 84 Bernie, 86 in Kerrville, and a good south southeasterly wind. All the clouds have gone away, uh, even around Del Rio. You know, we showed you that last half hour, there were still clouds there. Those are quickly evaporating. So uh, we're going to get a mostly sunny afternoon. The heat index already jumping up to near 100. It certainly will be above that mark here within the next couple of hours, and it uh, will stay above 100 for several hours later this afternoon. I think we peak at 103 for that feels like temperature again later today. Uh, let's look at the extended forecast very quickly. 97 Thursday, 98 Friday, 99 Saturday. There is thankfully a small chance of rain as we head into Sunday and on Monday. We'll be right back. 
All right, let's head back out to Jen and Fiona to see what they're getting up to on SA Live. We're learning a lot today. Mm -hmm. Yes, our home improvement show, and we brought in some of the experts today. That's right. We're ready to turn those DIY dreams into reality, and we're helping you become the ultimate weekend warrior. And here to help with an assist is Jill Burke, owner at Burke Ace Hardware and Gifts. And if you are painting and you are torn between two colors and feeling like a fool, you've got a pro tip. <laughs> okay, the pro tip is you can get these swatches from our store. There's three in a pack, and you literally pull off the adhesive, and you put it on the wall, and then that way you can determine which color you like best if you're torn between two colors. So much better than these tiny swatches. I know, I love that idea. Terry's also here and he has a great tip as well on how to take care of those paintbrushes after you use them, right? Yes, clean them really well and then when you get through with cleaning them, you just shake, shake it real good like this. Gets all the excess water out of it and return it to the case that it came in. And you can store it away just like that. Store it and it keeps its form so it doesn't get all crazy out of shape. We know when SA Live Home Improvement Show continues.